success story how HealthGrade uses unified data to connect patients with healthcare. I'm incredibly excited to introduce to the stage Cynthia Ginelli, our GVP of Strategic Consulting at Zeta, with Jillianne Jennings, Senior Director of Business Intelligence at HealthGrade. HealthGrade is a leading online marketplace to find and connect with the right doctor, the right hospital, and the right care. Serving more than 30 million visitors monthly to evaluate and connect with over 3 million U.S. healthcare providers. Thank you for your time and insights. Thank you, Winnie. Thank you, Julianne, for sharing your time. It's an opportunity to really spotlight what you've gone through in the last, let's say, 18 months about enterprise-wide data unification. And a lot of us in this room are approaching that every day. Uh, and we, you know, I have the opportunity working as a strategist on your brand to hit on topics like, okay, how do we address privacy and governance? How do we address personalization? What do we need to understand about known subscribers and then those anonymous customers? So it's a great pleasure working in, with you on those big initiatives and particularly with health grades, that underlying mission of improving patient outcomes at a massive scale really motivates me, so thank you. Awesome. Thank you for having me. All right, so we're going to kick this off with an idiom, right? So an idiom of a clean bill of health, right? You go back to the 17th century, you think about, you know, you had to have a bill of health that's associated with the folks on the vessel before they hit port. So in terms of data quality and context to our chat today, when did you realize, hey, you know, my data isn't going to get me where I need to go, or if I be so bold, my data health isn't up to snuff. How did you make that realization? Awesome. I love the idiom, clean bill of health. So at Health Grades, our mission is all about connect, connecting patients to physicians and doctors to be able to have more positive health outcomes. And so it drives all of us, everyone who works there. Uh, we're so proud of the mission. And it became apparent that having all of our different disparate data sources in different places really wasn't allowing us to be able to really draw on that mission of connecting. And so um, thinking about that connect, we wanted to work to connect our data into a centralized platform, into the CDP. And we acknowledge that that was um, a very big step in having a really strong consumer marketing journey that was kind of the first pillar to tackle in that connect journey. Now, if, you know, having working with you, I've, I understand you came from previously a DNP relationship. So how was that holding you back in terms of kind of del delivering on the relevance for these patient outcomes? Absolutely. I mean, it all came together at the same time when the task force was identifying this need to kind of democratize our data sets. Um, but there was also the impending, you know, early in 2021, it was like cookies are going to go away. What are publishers going to do? And so, you know, think of health grades as not only the largest physician directory in the U.S., but we're also a publisher site. And so uh, relying on cookies was not going to help us to make that connect story. Um, so we needed, you know, a platform that really could pull different disparate data sources together, uh, deterministic uh, data sources, anonymous data sources in a centralized fashion. I mean, you hit on the data model. Thank you for that. But operationally, I'm sure this was a different operating model internally within the teams. Tell us a little about how you manage that. Absolutely. So th there were silos within the organization. We have this great data set sitting in um, a data management platform that's not necessarily usable to the entire organization, uh, whereas we could have a, a CDP that would be available to the consumer marketing team, to the analytics team, to the web personalization team. So those were the important uh, factors in that of kind of moving away from that older technology, that older legacy that doesn't give you the whole patient view of someone who's in need of having a better clinical outcome. Right. And I'm going to say it, you've said it before, and it's, 
the word privacy, and it doesn't necessarily have to take the air out of the room. I think to your point about democratizing data and making it accessible for your internal constituents, you know, what's the rub in terms of, hey, is this privacy compliant in terms of how I'm addressing patient data? Talk to, you know, in the healthcare space, it's quite unique. So can you just tell us about that? Yeah, that's a really interesting thing. So I think when everyone thinks of healthcare data, they think of the data when they're going to visit their primary care physician. Um, but that's not necessarily the data that we're talking about as a health publisher site. But we actually have to be extremely vigilant and stringent to adhere to all of those HIPAA compliance regulations. Uh, so we're not actually targeting an individual with an exact specific condition. We have to rely a lot on our predictive modeling to be able to think that this person could potentially look like someone that would have pharmaceutical consumption or have a certain clinical um, disease. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, a lot of buzz about alternative data sets these days and social determinants with health. I mean, we've all gone through COVID and that's a bit of a conundrum there about making, you know, information about health available, but at the same time kind of protecting that um, while making it accessible. So uh, it kind of kicks off my next question. You know, how do you pair and balance kind of first party data collection and then the de-identification standards kind of associated with gaining trust to the, to the end patient? Yeah, the DMP is, re uh, the CDP, excuse me, is really <laughs> important for that, for the anonymous collection of, you know, somebody is reading an editorial article about a specific health condition that they're interested in. And so the, it is important to collect that kind of information. Um, but it's also important to have like texture about potentially that patient that's visiting and having more of those individual assets that we can kind of pair together to actually make that right connection between the patient and the, the doctor is important. So it's, it's kind of moving away from the one dimensional, you know, anonymous browse kind of behavior to you know, a more textured, whole patient kind of segmentation. Because when the patient goes in, they're looking for, say, you know, I have an asthma condition, then you're recommending physicians with top ratings and pulmonologist. reviews and pulmon pulmonologists. Tell, you know, that's a, I mean, you're really creating great opportunities for, for improving those outcomes. Absolutely. But, you know, I'm also, for example, I'm a mom, and I could be on a pediatrician page. Uh, looking up articles about, you know, why, you know, my kid swallowed this type of thing or I have itchy hair, and but I also might be a condition sufferer of something else. And so being able to look at that whole person, um, I might be interested in, in a different physician for a different type of specialty. Um, so the, the CDP really helps to kind of bring those facets together for the patient. Depths and surfaces. Um, so I'm going to end with my last question because I think we got about 20 minutes with us today. Uh, so how would you just go about recommending how folks approach rethinking their data practice at large? Any tips? Yeah, absolutely. I think the first thing is to not say, hey, one technology solution is going to solve my problems. And I think a lot of people that have worked with me have probably heard me say this. Make your use cases your North Star. And so my team really worked diligently to establish what our specific use cases were. And those use cases kind of drove us to really be able to establish what the right technology solution for us and for that connect story. Um, so I think just kind of, you know, not getting like locked up in the sales cycle and thinking like all these different bells and whistles are gonna solve my problems. What if my problems are very, very different from CNN's problems or, mm -hmm. you know, another publisher site. So it's, it's those use cases that I, I've made the North Star for us. And working together and not just saying this solves one department's issue. All right. Let's have something that's, you know, company-wide that we can all work on together. And the more that we can work on those things together, the more you learn to make the company better to grow. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy. Thank you.